Before we start today's video, once again, I have to promote the Ohio primary election night stream, which is happening tomorrow at 645 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know I've been promoting this nonstop. I know, but this will be the second to last video of the promotion stuff. I know people are getting sick of it, but if you go in the description down below, the very first link in the description down below, like I just mentioned, there will be a link to the live stream. Click that link and you will be directed right to the live stream. And again, click that reminder button. So the second that I start live streaming, you know exactly what's happening. So again, tomorrow, Tuesday, May 3rd at 6.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're having the election night stream. A lot of people will show up. I hope everybody tunes in, share with their friends, and uh, yeah. All right, let's get into the second to last video before the Ohio primary. Americanism, not Americanism, will be our credo. Then we can be assured that other nations will not treat America with respect, the respect that we deserve. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back in with a new video. And today, we're going to be doing our second to last video about the Ohio and Indiana primaries. I know, I know. You just talked about, you know, how there's only one day to go. Why are you doing two videos? This video will be focused only on the congressional races and the Ohio governorship primary. So, yeah. But the point is, there will be a second video later today, don't know when, there will be a video fully focused on the Ohio Senate race, and I'll give my final prediction for that race. So let's get right into it, folks. We'll be talking about the great states of Indiana and Ohio's house races, and the governorship a little bit. But before we even get to that, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button below, subscribe. Share with your friends, hit the little bell, and yes, of course, go follow that mysterious Twitter account in the description down below, where you reach 2,000 uh, followers on that. Let's continue to grow rapidly. So, all right, no more promotions. It's time to get into the meat and potatoes of this video. We'll be focusing on the primaries. The I think it's like seven or eight, you know, main primaries, you know, we should focus on. Then I'll give my governorship prediction at the end of the video. So let's get right into it. So we're going to start in Indiana as quite frankly, you know, you know, west to east, you know, I think that just makes more sense. And of course, we're going to be starting in Indiana's first. Now, usually for a district like this, this is a district that Biden won by eight and a half points. It's where Gary, Indiana is. And if there's one part of the country I say never go to, never go to Gary, Indiana, trust me. It's not, um, hate to say it, it's not a good place to go. But that's just the truth. It's just disgusting what Democrats have done to a city like Gary, Indiana. It's been destroyed by globalist trade deals. And currently, they're represented by a clown named Frank Mervin. Now, this is a district that Biden won by eight and a half. And like I said multiple times... A Biden plus eight seat, good luck. That's most likely going to flip. However, this is a seat where it may be a bit harder for Republicans to win, as Frank Mervin is a longtime incumbent, fairly popular. It's still a Biden plus eight and a half district. Though I do believe in 2024, it flips no matter what. Just this year, I think it kind of depends who the candidate is. And there's really two candidates in this race. You got the MAGA type, you know, conservative that I do support in Jennifer Roof Green. If you don't know who she is, she is a former Air Force pilot and she has a solid issues page. You know, she is black, but she doesn't make it, you know, her entire campaign. Then you got the other clown for the Republicans, Blair Milo. And I'm going to say this about Milo. Uh, apparently the... I. <laughs> He's, apparently he shilled for Fauci. Like he made a bunch of tweets saying, look at our, basically our savior and Fauci. It's like, you're kidding me, right? So you really got a MAGA type conservative in Jennifer Ruth Green versus Blair Milo, who just looks like the biggest rhino ever. I mean, you're shilling for Fauci. I mean, come on. And quite frankly, I heard that Milo doesn't have a, 
has some other skeletons in the closet. So I don't think it's a good idea to risk the nomination with that clown. So Jennifer Ruth Green is what I would consider type of that the MAGA type conservative. Now, if she does get the nomination, this is a competitive seat. I firmly believe she has a chance of winning. I say, you know, 30 to 40 percent, but still more than recent years. Recent years, maybe like 12 percent. This year, it's potentially upwards of a 40 percent chance of winning this race. So I consider this race a competitive seat, and I think everybody should pay attention to who the nomination is, or the nominee is. Now you get Indiana's ninth. This is already going to be a huge upgrade down here. You can probably guess how conservative this district is. I mean, Trump won this place by 28 points. Yet somehow, the incumbent is one of the biggest rhinos in the Indiana House delegation. Trey Hollinsworth. He is an absolutely useless rhino. Good thing is, he retired. Goodbye, you're useless. And again, just like Indiana's first, there really is two candidates in this race. Erin Hoochin, she is the MAGA-type conservative, all right? Again, when I say MAGA, I'm saying they're better than, you know, the generic boomer con that's like, oh, yes, we must talk about tax cuts all day. They do talk about it, but it's like they're a bit more nuanced about it. Essentially, like, you know, Jim Jordan, that's kind of like what you consider a MAGA conservative. Very socially conservative, and quite frankly, Hoochin is very conservative. I mean, in the Indiana Senate, which she was in, she was one of the most conservative people in the entire Indiana Senate. And quite frankly, that's a good thing. Now, her only real challenger is Mike Sodrell. I think that's the clown's name. Huge rhino is getting shilled by some bad people. And I do hope that Erin Hoochin wins, as if she does win, this is another flip for the MAGA conservative movement, which has slowly picked up steam since Trump's election. As you can tell, that's one rhino down. There's still a lot to go, but hey, knocking out one of the three rhinos in Indiana, I'll take it. So Indiana really has two races, Indiana's first and Indiana's ninth. Those are only two that, you know, kind of matter in Indiana. Sure, you got to think, I think it's Indiana's eighth. The guy may have a challenger there. I don't know for certain, but it's still a good thing we get rid of Hollingsworth, a big, fat rhino. So that's one down. Now we got to get to Ohio. And this is where things get a bit interesting. Now, there's a lot more ground to be made up in Ohio. There's definitely a lot more districts to be won here. The first one is, of course, Ohio's 8th, which used to be represented by Max Miller slash Bob Gibbs. So that's why I consider the district, you know, a new district. This is a district that, you know, voted for Trump by 10 points. And we had a huge rhino in Anthony Gonzalez represent this place. Excuse me, I said Max Miller. I meant Anth Anthony Gonzalez. He was the representative here. And of course, talk about this district here. He retired and the generic conservative in... Jodan Schultz, they does say the say the person's name. There we go. Yes, he retired as well. So Republicans have essentially kind of a two way race right now. You got Max Miller, who's the MAGA conservative, Trump endorsed, versus Jodan Schultz, who's the conservative. And I think Bob Gibbs. Yes, Bob Gibbs was the retired one. Excuse me, I mixed this up. So Max Miller versus Jodan Schultz is the main two candidates. Max Miller's endorsed by Trump. It appears everything's going his way, and if Republicans, you know, do win, if he does win, which it appears he's going to win, has all the support, this is another win for the MAGA conservative movement. We're finally getting rid of some of these rhinos. I mean, getting rid of Bob, I mean, Bob Gibbs was okay, but Anthony Gonzalez was awful, and thank God we got rid of him. And don't worry, I won't make that mistake tomorrow when I say Max Miller has been, you know, primary out or anything like that sorry about that but anthony gonzalez awful rhino thank god this uh district is going towards max miller who is a MAGA conservative and good on the issues now we have another interesting race ohio's ninth this is one of those districts that's represented by a democrat however it's a trump plus three seat so no matter who the nominee is in this race the democrats down the water marcy captor 
dead on the rival. She, uh, Marcy's done. Uh, it's quite easy. I mean, it's a Trump plus three seat. I think she's obviously done. I mean, this became a more Republican seat. It just, yeah, no matter who the nominee is here, she's done. And there really is three candidates. The one I endorse, which Trump did mention, but not endorse, was J.R. Majowski. He is the America first candidate. It appears he's going to win. He is a very big Chad, figuratively and literally, on the issues and physically. He is very good on the issues. I fully support him. And at the same time, there's actually two other candidates. This is one of the only races of the night where there's really only three uh, candidates that have a serious shot of winning. You got the Chamber of Commerce candidate in Theresa Gavernor. And from what I know, apparently she seems like a rhino. If she's getting sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce, which is not a good sign, apparently she's a big rhino, potentially. Then you got the third candidate in Craig Rydell, which he was endorsed by Jim Jordan, which is a decent sign. And I looked at his campaign page, looked very MAGO. So if we get stuck with Craig Rydell, that's fine. But based on what I'm hearing, based on what, I, what I'm seeing, it appears Republicans are going to get an America first conservative here. J.R. Majowski appears to be, you know, on his way to being elected to the House Looks very good on the issues, and either way, bye. Bye to this Democrat, Marcy Captor. Out! She is done, dead on arrival. Now we get to the one primary where it's not a Republican one. This is the only primary for the Democrats I give a shit about. Ohio's 11th. Yes, we're talking about Ohio's 11th. You could probably guess who's running. Chantel Brown versus Nina Turner. Ah, God, I cannot believe Turner's running again. She is, however, and of course, it's really an establishment Democrat versus a progressive, you know, squad type Democrat. And Chantel Brown, of course, is the incumbent. And this is going to be one of the contested race of the night. This is going to be the closest race. There's a chance Nina Turner wins, which again, even if she wins, she's still going to win the general election by 40 points at minimum. This is a Biden plus like 40 seat at least. Yeah, Biden plus 58. So either way, if the progressive wins, <coughs> which would be hilarious, she would win this race easily. But still, if, you know, Chantel Brown gets primary out, that's actually a good sign that, hey, the incumbency, yeah, that's kind of dead. Like incumbency still matters. But if Chantel Brown gets knocked out by Turner, yeah, that's going to be a big surprise to me and again this is gonna be a big you know hotly contested race i do still think turner's gonna lose but it's gonna be very close either way now we get to the last race in ohio that i really give a crap about that is of course ohio's 13th which is a tire fire of a primary now none of the candidates are good in this race really you got madison Giselito, Gisito. They got to say her name. She is the definition of MAGA Inc. You know, slightly better than, you know, generic conservatives, but she's one of those cringy types that like, oh yes, we must stop socialism. And it's just more extreme. It's like, that's her entire campaign. It's very cringe. And her issues page is very, you know, MAGA Inc type. You know what I'm talking about? Like immigration, you know, legal immigration is good actually. But it's like, either way, it's kind of a crappy race, but still, she may be significantly better than her opponent, Shay Hawkins, who is the definition of a rhino. If you know who Hawkins is, he's a Blexit grifter, and he used to be a staffer for Tim Scott. Yeah, that's not a good sign. If you're a staffer for Tim Scott, out! Out, out, out! So, yeah, this race, I don't care who wins, though I prefer Madison to win, I guess... And either, either candidate, they're going to win the general election. I mean, I think Biden won this seat by, you know, three points. It's like, yeah, Democrats are not going to, you know, win this race either way. But I do wish there was a better candidate here. But as of now, we're going to get stuck with a MAGA Inc. type or a Rhino. Pick their poison. And that, folks, is, of course, essentially the video. Or the, I guess you could say the house portion of the video. 
We gotta quickly discuss the Ohio governorship. This is definitely the part of the video everybody's been waiting for. And Ohio just had a new poll from Trafalgar, one of the best pollsters in the country. They have the wine at 47%. This race is over. Look, I wish Bly Stone can just go away. He single-handedly costed us the governorship. I don't care what you people say. I think he was set up. I think he was purposely sent by DeWine to screw over Renacy. Which again, Renacy, he may be, you know, kind of crappy at times, but still a significant upgrade over DeWine. Blystone had no reason to. He should have dropped out when he saw, okay, I'm pulling at 12%. It's like, why? If you really want to get rid of DeWine, why did you not support Renacy? This is a race he should have dropped out. Now, you look at the other polls. It's going to be really a matter of how big of a win will DeWine get. And I looked at a bunch of the polls. Look, I think they're going to slightly uh, overstate Mike DeWine's number. At the same time, I think they're going to understate Blystone's number. Renacy, I think they'll be about right. So if you're ready for my prediction, <sighs> here it is, folks. This is my governorship prediction for the Ohio GOP primary. Here it is, folks. This is who, what I project the numbers would be. I think DeWine gets 47.5%. He will be the winner, obviously. Renacy, I think it's around 32%. You know, slightly better than the polls are saying, but not much better. Blystone's being useless at 18%, you know. May crack 20, you know, like a bunch of DeWine voters, you know, stay home or something like that. Then you had others like two and a half percent, you know, you know, like Rod Hood, whoever his name is. And yeah, that is my prediction. Uh, very disappointed. We could have got rid of the, one of the biggest rhinos in the country, but sad. We're going to be stuck with the wine, right? And hopefully the state legislator is super majority Republican. So this clown can't stop vetoing everything. But hopefully this forced him to the right like he did for Greg Abbott. Probably did it, but still, it was a good try. Just Blystone's useless, and this is the only time that I do think we should have runoffs in primaries because if this was forced into a runoff, the wine was dead. He was dead on the rival. This should have been a runoff, but again, he may crack fifty percent. Just as of now, I think the wine wins by around fifteen to sixteen points. Big disappointment, big miss. I think it's term limited though in twenty twenty six. So we maybe get somebody better. Just again, it's a big rip. And uh, yeah. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the first video of the day. I know 18 minutes talking about the house races and the governorship. But later today, I'll be doing a video on the race that everybody wants to know my opinion on the Senate race. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit the little bell and yes. Of course, go follow that mysterious Twitter account in the description down below. And uh, yeah, get ready for tomorrow's election night stream again. First link in the description down below. And yeah, be ready for the final Senate prediction for Ohio. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.